And now, a thought from man. You know, Batman the Killing Joke, that was just such a great adaption. Here's to cry. I was just surprised how well they followed the story. I mean, it was just absolutely great. It did great by actually bringing the panels to life. And I just love this one. This might be my favorite Batman movie. That's not to say it doesn't have its fair share of criticism, though. You're going mad. The first half of the movie, it just feels like it's there to be there. It mainly feels like filler. It's mostly there to just establish Batgirl as Batman's sidekick and to kind of introduce you to her in the concept. But ultimately, if you've already known about Batman, you kind of already knew about Batgirl. So I don't know. It takes up a good half of the movie and I don't hate it. I mainly just feel like it's just not as strong when you really get into the killing joke part. It mainly just feels like you could have cut this shorter. It didn't need to be as long as it was. Do you realize what you've done? A certain problem I do have is that when they're setting up Barbara, it takes a little bit of time. And I just feel like they could have done this better. Because what they do is set up this other guy named Francesco who's like the nephew of this crime boss. And he's obsessed with Batgirl. And ultimately, it's just like, did this go anywhere? Do we need this? Because by the second half of the movie, he's out. He's gone. You don't hear him again. He's just done. So he's kind of just that villain that's just a device. He's just a plot device, if anything, and not a very good one. He's just there for the first half. He doesn't really set up the second half. They mainly just spend a little bit of too much time on it. It's not bad, but you just feel like maybe you could have cut it a little short to get us to the killing joke part. I'm the next evolution, baby. Another problem I kind of have with the movie is that I don't know why they put sexual tension between Batgirl and Batman. It just feels kind of creepy. At least to me. I don't know why they had it. It didn't feel like it needed to be there. I feel like all it needed to be was just Batgirl just feels like she's not treated as an equal. And so she decides to give up the mantra. Or the job just gets a little too much for her to handle and so she just decides to quit. It seems better to do it that way rather than to have the sexual tension. Because ultimately it doesn't even get addressed by the end of the film or even in the second half. So I feel like it was just there to kind of fill up the time. And it's just like, you didn't need to do that. You could have just left it as maybe an hour long special that mainly just tells the story of the killing joke. That seems like that would have worked better, but eh, what can you do? It was just sex for God's sake. Everything else about the movie is just absolutely fantastic. It follows the comic to a T. It brings those panels to life. Like when Joker is laughing, I'm like, Holy crap, that's just exactly like the comic. Or when they show the Joker about to shoot Barbara, it's like exactly how the comic did it. All the panels basically feel like they've been brought to life. And I just love that about this. The voice acting is superb. Tara Strong is great as Batgirl as always. First of all, I realize this is probably not how you thought the story would start. Not with a big shiny moon or a city that could look stunning in spite of itself. Kevin Conroy is spectacular as Batman as always. I need to know, for when that time comes, that I'd made a genuine attempt to talk things over, to try and avert the inevitable, just once. And fucking Mark Hamill. I mean, this has to be him at his best. This is absolutely his best Joker portrayal ever. Memories are what our reason is based on. If we deny them, we deny reason itself. Although... What's wrong with that, really? It's not like we're contractually tied down to rationality. There is no sanity clause. I liked him in the Batman animated series. I liked him in the Arkham game series. But this was his absolute best. He, mm, spectacular, just superb. At this point, he basically is the definitive Joker. The second half is just absolutely amazing. <laughs> That's funny. The ending was just spectacular. They followed the comic exactly how it ended, where basically Batman and Joker are talking to each other, and Batman wants Joker to just join him. He wants to be able to rehabilitate him and fix him because this conflict just can't keep going on and on to the point that they end up killing each other. And Joker just says, I can't do that. It just doesn't work like that for me. And it still ends on basically that joke. 
that one joke at the end of the comic that's just iconic. And when the movie stops, it's haunting. You're just like, well, I feel like at the end credits though, when it shows off Barbara becoming Oracle, at some point I feel like it kind of undermines it. But not to the point that it's not as haunting as it was. It's still great and fantastic. It's a great adaption. It follows the comic book exactly how it should. It doesn't take risks, but it doesn't need to. What happened in the comic was good enough that it needed to be a special and followed through. <laughs> <laughs> So all in all, this is a great adaption. It follows the comic book exceptionally. It's just that first half kind of hurts it from being as great as it could have been. It's not that it changes anything. It's just, it feels tacked on. It feels like you put it there just to give it a longer run time. And I just feel like maybe you could have just went with a normal hour long special or something. It didn't need to be as long as it was. And the sexual tension between Batman and Barbara just felt like you didn't need that at all. It could have just been Batman just isn't treating Batgirl like an equal. But when it gets to the second half, that is the killing joke. That is the comic book that is so iconic. It does it just right. Everything is basically bringing the panels all to life. The voice cast is spectacular, this is all of them at their best, and ultimately, this is basically one of the best Batman adaptions of all time. But that's just a thought. <laughs>